Good day, Wonder Nurses. I'm Nurse Anne. Today, I prepared eight questions for you to assess your knowledge about various nursing topics. You have 30 seconds in each question. Then after answering all the questions, the correct answer and rationale will be provided. So if you're ready, let's start. Question number one. Question number one. A patient has just had a hemorrhoidectomy. Which of the following is the most appropriate nursing intervention for this patient? Nursing interventions after a hemorrhoidectomy are aimed at the management of pain and prevention of bleeding. An ice pack will increase comfort and decrease bleeding. Therefore, the correct answer is letter A. Question number two. 
Nurse Whoops is providing dietary instruction to a patient who has been prescribed with cyclosporine. Which of the following food item should she instruct to avoid? Cyclosporine is an immunosuppressant drug that has been used to prevent organ rejection after transplantation. Common side effects of the medication include high blood pressure, swollen or inflamed gums, and numbness or tingling of the hands or feet. Important consideration. Do not take large doses of aspirin or NSAID medications when taking cyclosporine. Going back to the question, the correct answer is grapefruit juice because it contains a compound that inhibits the metabolism of cyclosporin. As a result, consumption of grapefruit juice can increase cyclosporin levels by 50% to 100%, thereby greatly increasing the risk of toxicity. Question number three. Nurse Tino is caring for a patient with chronic gastritis. He monitors the patient knowing that these patients are at risk for which vitamin deficiency. Chronic gastritis causes deterioration and atrophy of the lining of the stomach, leading to the loss of function of the parietal cells. The source of the intrinsic factor is loss, which results in the inability to absorb vitamin B12. Then this leads to the development of pernicious anemia. Therefore, the correct answer is D. The patient will be at risk for vitamin B12 deficiency. Question number four. The nurse is assessing a client with a suspected diagnosis of cataract. The chief clinical manifestation that the nurse would expect to note in the early stages of cataract formation is a gradual, painless blurring of central vision is the chief clinical manifestation of a cataract. Therefore, the correct answer is C. If you want to learn more about the eyes, we have a simple discussion here. You can check the link after the video. Let's continue. Question number five. Nurse Snow is caring for a child with a suspected diagnosis of rheumatic fever. She reviews the laboratory results knowing which laboratory study would assist in confirming the diagnosis. Rheumatic fever is an inflammatory autoimmune disease that affects the connective tissues of the heart, joints, subcutaneous tissues, and blood vessels of the central nervous system. The laboratory result that will assist in confirming the diagnosis is a positive anti-streptolysin O titer. Question number six. Patient X came to the ER with a complaint of a cold and inability to void. It is also noted that the patient has a history of benign prosthetic hyperplasia. Knowing the data, the nurse determines that the patient should be questioned about the use of for patients with BPH, episodes of urinary retention can be triggered by certain medications like decongestants, anticholinergics, and antidepressants. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Retention can also be precipitated by other factors such as alcoholic beverages, infection, bed rest, and becoming chilled. Question number seven. A nurse is caring for a client in labor. The nurse determines that the client is beginning the second stage of labor, when which of the following assessments is noted? The correct answer is C, because the second stage of labor begins when the cervix dilated completely and ends with the birth of the neonate. Finally, question number eight. Nurse Moon is reviewing the record of a client in the labor room and notes that the nurse midwife has documented that the fetus is at negative one station. She determines that the fetal presenting part is 
Station is the relationship of the presenting part to an imaginary line drawn between the ischial spines measured in centimeters and noted as a negative number above the line and a positive number below the line. At negative 1 station, the fetal presenting part is 1 centimeter above the ischial spines. Therefore, the correct answer is letter A. That's it for today. If you want to learn more, you can check some of my Q&A videos and many simple discussions on my YouTube channel. Keep on learning, nurses! Thank you for listening. I hope you learned and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video!